I was anxious to support Legacy of Blood because I felt that we had planted the seeds with the prior tour. 7L and Esoteric were out with us and out of space. Being out on the road with people that you're friends with is a much different experience than being on the road with people that you're not. It was like 13 of us, all friends, touring the country together. How, how many people in the world can say that? Yeah, I mean, my first time in Europe, uh, you know, was one of the greatest experiences of my life. And for a couple days there, maybe the worst experience of my life. We fly into Germany. Um, we have a connecting flight to get to Switzerland. There's snow everywhere. All flights are canceled. We have to hop on like three trains to get to Switzerland. It was a fucking mess. We were miserable and shit, but we were kind of laughing, too, at the same time, while we're on them fucking trains. Like, yo, of course this shit happens to us. get there, everyone's nervous. Place holds like 1,500 people. You know, and desk peeks behind the curtain. It was like, yo, it's fucking packed, baby. Like, yo, word up, it's fucking sold out out there. You know, we hit the fucking stage, yo. This shit was like, I'm getting the chills thinking about like hitting the stage that night. The vibe in that fucking building, man. You can't duplicate that shit with, with, with drugs or alcohol or anything, that kind of feeling. That's, that's the first time it hits you in your head, like, yo, we're, we're really global. We always knew it, but again, like I said, statistics and numbers and sound scans don't, don't mean anything. It's, it's being there with, with 1,500 people who speak Swiss German and they're singing your words. Everyone came to that conclusion that we needed to be a touring group at different times. For me, it was probably around the Legacy of Blood tour in the U.S. and then it was driven home more in Europe that I started realizing that the sales weren't matching the number of people that were coming to see us. People like Desk, King Size, and more specifically Question and Crip were there to see all this type of shit. But when you get on stage, they're all like, you know, sing, singing along and like, they know who you are and shit. And like, you know, that, that just like bugged me out. Having them kids know every word of, of, of what you're saying, that shit's deep, man. That shit's powerful. Look at this fucker hanging out. He's gonna, this fucking old fuck's gonna pull out in front of me and then do 10. It's fucking unbelievable. Okay. Everyone needs a fucking lesson in East Coast driving in this fucking city. I fucking hate I don't I have there's no rhyme or reason for the traffic in fucking California that makes me insane. We were on a fucking highway on a Sunday night at 10 p.m. and we were sitting in traffic. I wanna open the door, get out, and punch everyone in the face at every stop. Uh, yeah, I mean we had a week off from from Rock the Bells and rather than fly home and get jet lagged and probably all get sick. We just thought it would be a good idea and, you know, found a crib for a good price and figured we'd just kick it out there. We got a lot of family out there. You know, the heads from Terra came through, as always. Nick has a studio at his crib, you know, in, in L.A. So uh, we had plans for me to do guest vocals on um, one of the Terra tracks for their new EP. You know, just wanted me to guest vocals on it. 
do guest vocals on it. We thought it would be interesting, like, you know, for me not to rap, you know what I mean? Because, like, I kind of am known for, like, somewhat of a powerful voice. They were like, yo, you could probably do some hardcore shit and it would probably sound good. Like as far as the Army of the Pharaohs, like by the mid 90s, you know, I've been running around and making music with so many people like, um, you know, from Philly, like Lost Children of Babylon, Chief Kamachi, you know what I'm saying? Just like knowing everyone in the scene and whatnot. And then my man, Joey Blanco, he was like, yo, Paz, check this out. It, it was this record from these kids called God Complex out of Boston. So I copped it, brought it home, listened to it, loved the record, you know, sort of felt that they were kind of doing the same thing I was doing or trying to do. When there was a number on there, so I called them and was just like, yo, this is who I am, this is where I'm from, like, holla at me, you know what I'm saying? Ends up being esoteric, you know, um, Seamus. Uh, so he called me, we like hit it off from the gate. I met Bahamadia right around the time when um, she was fucking with Gangstar a little bit after her first record had come out. Um, you know, she was Gangstar Foundation. Um, and around the same time, she was really pop. Everything was popping for her in Philly and uh, to some degree on the national level, getting burned on BET and MTV and things like that. And uh, a radio station in Philly gave her uh, a radio show on Friday nights. And she would have everyone come through, you know, from, from that era, the you know, mid to late 90s era. And, and she called me and asked me to come up there and we hit it off from, from the jump, you know? Uh, Kamachi was, you know, working with her at the time, and she really put us together, you know, in, in, in terms of making music. And around the same time, you know, 7L and Esoteric and Virtuoso um, were beginning to, you know, come into the frame a little bit more. So I invited those guys down and uh, Baham had us up on the show all together. And that kind of sparked the idea of the first Army of the Pharaohs 12 inch. You know, it being 7L and myself and Vert and SO and, you know, her respecting what we did and vice versa. So we asked her to hop on the record, you know, and at that time that was a big deal for us because, you know, she was a major label recording artist. She was, you know, at that point, the biggest artist we worked with. And, you know, she was running with us, you know, and that sort of validated that record for a lot of people to see her name on there. That show and those encounters up there and those freestyle sessions sort of, you know, planted the seeds and then, you know, blossomed into what it is today. Yo, what's good, man? It's Reef the Lost Cause, West Philly's finest, you know what I'm saying? Rapper AOTP, you know what I'm saying? Been building with these brothers for years, you know what I'm saying? Doing my thing in Philly. Eventually, I met Paz, we got cool, just started building. You know, he asked me to be a part of this crew, part of this project, you know what I'm saying? And I was honored to be on it. So, you know, I'm just happy here shooting the Bloody Tears video. All my fam out here, we just wilding, smoking, drinking all day. It's just a good thing for everybody, you know what I'm saying? Because the Jedi Mind Tricks, you know, fan base and networking is, is really big. And, you know, this is Paz helping everybody out, you know what I'm saying? Reaching back, you know what I mean? Putting his people's on, or at least in position to make some moves to get their name out there. So, I'm grateful for that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, I feel less pressure with a AOTP, but not because I feel less pressure to make quality music. I feel the same amount of pressure to make a great album 
I feel less pressure in the respect that I have so many talented people around me that I don't feel all the weight on my shoulders. You know what I mean? Like, when you're working with people that you have faith in, and you know, yo, we're going to do this song, I got to spit a 16, but everyone else is going to beast on it. There's definitely, there's, and there's that friendly competition, too, that makes you like, yo, he killed that, I'm going to be a little bit more sharper. You know what I mean? I should rewrite my shit, or I should do this. But, you know, a lot of, you know, a lot of producers want to work with us, so, you know, we, we get tons of beats, so, you know, that part of it is fun, hearing new kids, you know, make good beats, but it really, both projects are about good beats and good rhymes, you know what I mean? And there's equal amount of pressure with both, because you never want to give the fans bullshit, but I guess I feel less pressure in the respect that, like, I don't have to carry the weight lyrically, you know what I mean? I like being executive producer more than I like being an artist. I think I, I'm probably better at that than I am at being a rapper. I always, like everything I'm involved in, I know good beats. I know how artwork should look. I know what people should be on what, you know what I'm saying? So like, I love doing that shit. I, I you know, I, I want to keep doing that. I want to keep finding good artists and, and help nurture what they do in their career and whatnot. We make that music for the streets, man. We make that hardcore shit, man, for everybody. For the streets, man. We, it, it ain't for your kids. It's for them hardcore motherfuckers, man. You know what I mean? It's for them niggas that don't give a fuck, man. You know what I mean? Been through the grind, been through the struggle, been through all that shit, man. That's what it's for. Other than that, man, if you like that hardcore shit, you rolling with us, man. For real, that's what we bring, that hardcore hip hop, man. Q the Mission, AOTP for life, man. Viral click. That's it, that's it, that's good. Like that. Word up. Yeah. Shotgun of this rap shit, cop guns to blast shit.